Hi guys, shameless self-promotion klaxon. I've got a book out, it's called Hey Listen, it's a funny history about video games and I want you to buy it. So, this month's video is based on a bit from the book. But don't worry, it's all right. Toru Iwatani didn't want to make video games, he wanted to make pinball machines. Namco didn't want to make pinball machines, they wanted to make video games. And Iwatani worked for Namco, so he made video games. His first three, GB, Bombi, and QTQ, were all video game versions of pinball. Fair play. I've no idea how he managed to get away with that three times in a row, but eventually he set himself a new challenge to make a non-violent game in the hopes he might appeal to female gamers. Feminist? You decide. In the words of Iwatani, When I imagined what women enjoy, the image of them eating cakes and desserts came to mind. For those who haven't guessed yet, we're talking about Pac-Man. Sort of. He was originally called Puck-Man in Japan, but they chose to rename him in the West to reduce the risk of offensive graffiti amendments. Which sort of makes sense, but if that was such a big risk, how come Nintendo released an arcade version of Duck Hunt? Pac-Man was a very realistic game for its time. For example, Pac-Man moves quicker along empty rows, as opposed to the ones where he's eating up pellets, which is just like in real life. Close your eyes. I've just realised that's going to make it much harder for them to read the book. <clears throat> oh well, close your eyes. Imagine running down a street. Okay. Now imagine running down that street again, but this time you're eating a bag of minstrels. Uh, see? It wouldn't slow you down massively, but it would definitely shave the edge off. Really ahead of its time, this game. Pac-Man... Every sentence in my book starts with the word Pac-Man. I'm finding out after I sign off the edit. Pac-Man was the first game ever to feature cinematic cutscenes that rewarded players for progressing through its levels, although many questions were left unanswered. For example, we always assume Pac-Man's the hero, but why was he being haunted? What did he do? Pac-Man, seriously, Jesus. Pac-Man's sequel actually began life as an unofficial enhancement kit for the original called Crazy Otto, which gave Pac-Man some long legs and changed the appearance of the ghosts. Midway, the game's American publisher obviously wanted something to build on the brand of the original, so the decision was made to co-opt the knockoff, lose the legs, and create a female counterpart to Pac-Man instead. Originally, this character was going to be called, unsurprisingly, Pac-Woman, but several female employees suggested Miss Pac-Man instead, However, someone then pointed out that in one of the new game's cutscene animations, a stork delivers a baby, so calling the new character Miss would mean the child was born out of wedlock. The character was briefly renamed Mrs. Pac-Man, before finally being permanently christened Ms. Pac-Man, presumably because by that point they decided the vaguer the name the better, in the hopes of making everyone shut up about the marital status of a fictional yellow circle. One of the ghosts was also renamed in the sequel, from Clyde to Sue, after the sister of one of the developers, Doug McRae. Now, you might think it's weird to name a ghost, which is dead, after a family member, but in McRae's defence, you only think that because it totally is. Many arcade cabinets from this era had a quirk where you could get free credits using cigarette lighters. It had to be the cheap little ones that had an electrical spark in them, and basically, if you held them against the metal coin plate and flicked them, the spark would trigger the internal mechanism and you'd get a random number of free goes. Or a fire. And I know what you're thinking. It feels like there should be a joke in there somewhere about the band Arcade Fire, but I've had a look, and there isn't. Buy my book.